Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 12 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So after a brief interlude in our last episode where we went off of the, the guide briefly to show how the Rails generated scaffold worked, we created a parallel model called POST that's very similar in functionality to Article but did it in about a half hour compared to the 10 videos we did to get the um, incrementally get the article resource up and running. So we will go back to the the guide now. If you want to pick up the the previous 11 episodes got us to where we are now. The 11th one is kind of an optional detour that you don't necessarily need if you're just going through because we're not going to be modifying the post uh, scaffold resource any further in this video series. It was just there to to show how you can get to an end result much faster than um, going one by one through the resources and everything in this guide. So we're going to uh, now add a second model that relates to the article. So you can see we've got an article and now we want to be able to comment on each article. So we'll go and use the Rails model generator. This time we're going to generate the model before we generate the controller. And we'll generate the comment model. It will have a commenter that will be a string. The body will be a text area or text data type. And then article here will be references. So that will be, you'll have an article ID that will be a foreign key in this comments table after we create it. So let's go into our application and run this generator. We can see that we've created the comment model, the comment test, and the comments fixture, comments.yaml there um, as noted here in the the guide. We'll take a look at comment. It should match what we see here with uh, belongs to article. We'll close. We'll keep routes open. And take a look at our new comment model. So it matches what we expected. The, uh, the references adds when you generate with references it will add in this belongs to article which indicates the relationship between those two models so the comment will have a an article id and it will belong to that article model our fixture so our article will have to change this so that it uh, matches the um, um, the articles that we already have so the the way that fixtures work if you've got a, a an association is that you would use the named result of that that fixture name that you've got there so we've got two fixtures named nerd and y and we want, um, I'll, I'll actually make two comment, we'll make two comments for nerd and one comment for, for why. So I'll pause and adapt that. All right, so I've got my uh, comments fixtures here. So each one has a different um, um, commenter body and then article so nerd should have two comments why should have one comment um, I'll, I'll actually so instead of one and two here I'll, I'll, I'll change the fixtures to make them a little bit more um, meaningful so I'll pause and do that so we've got the um, now instead of one and two we've got GM Ruby for Ruby enthusiast enthusiast and then uh, Y visionary so that when you're 
dealing with these comments, they have a little bit more context than just one and two. Um, it helps you kind of tell the, if you think about when you're doing a, a fairly complex integration, especially if you want to do something with a system test where you're going through a journey of somebody for a user persona, it's nice to have those fixtures named in such a way that the um, you can kind of tell the story with them. So that's my preference. You can do what you want in your own fixtures. You do need to make sure if you're, if you're using um, references that you do name them after your um, your associated fixture name, everything else is um, optionary, but optional and to your discretion. So we will continue on here, take a look at the migration that was generated. So we've got now create comments and you can see um, the string commenter like we added, text body like we added, and then uh, references article, um, null false so it, it can't be blank, and then it's a foreign key in the, um, in the database. So we will now add in and uh, run that migration, see what it does to our schema. So it ran, even though we have three migrations in this app right now, it only ran the comment, create comments migration, which is the one that hadn't been run yet. If we go and take a look at our schema now, we can see that the um, articles remains unchanged, posts remains unchanged. And then at the bottom of this, so we can see uh, T dot in that that foreign key T dot references foreign key true. Let's open back up this. So null false foreign key true. We go and take a look at how that translates out in the in the schema. We've got um, T dot integer article ID null false here in the create table declaration. And then we've got an index article ID, and then it's indexing comments on article ID. So that comes with part of the, the references option and then the foreign key true. You can see at the very bottom here, add foreign key comments articles came into our schema. So we'll move on now and take a look at the model associations that we've got here. So we have a foreign key in comments that associates to an article. So each article, each comment belongs to an article, but one article can have many comments. So even in our fixtures, if we went in and had two comments associated with the, the nerd fixture. And so the thing that we haven't done yet that we need to do is go into this article.rb and add has many comments. Before I do that, I'm going to go in and try to do um, the comments association without adding it and show you what happens. You can see no method error on a.comments right now because we don't have that has many association um, on it. So I'm going to go in now and change that article model so that it has the declaration. Has many comments. I'm going to in the console here reload instantiate that object. You can see now um, it's selecting 
I'm going to do a dot comments or article dot comments select comments from comments where comments dot article ID equals that article ID and so that the virtue of adding that has many comments there tells defines in the model those uh, th that association article dot comments will now give you an active record association relation I think collection proxy so active record associations collection proxy is technically the uh, the name of that that class but it behaves like an array you can see the the way that that prints is just as a um, an empty collection just like an array little literal would print so We've got the associating models section taken care of. And as noted here, we just demonstrated it in the console. Now that we have has many comments there, um, article.comments or uh, instance variable article.comments will work. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a route for comments. So, so far in our routes, we've got top level resources associated. So um, we've got resources articles, we have resources posts that came in with the, the generated um, scaffold generated uh, parallel model that we created with the scaffold generator. And now if we look here, so this is a, in a Ruby block, resources articles do resources comments end and so we'll take a look we'll we'll add that in and yeah Braille's routes now see that we've got new article comment path edit article comment path I'm gonna create an error here so that we can see the, the routing it's a little bit easier to read here in the routing error page so we've got article comments path because of that uh, being nested so articles article ID comments would be your your index for comments your articles article ID comments um, would be your post section so similar to how we had articles post to articles for for the articles resource now it's articles with a specific article ID parameter and then comments and then our um, and then our format but uh, and then new article comment path similar to what we had with article only this time it's articles article ID parameter comments and no parameter there and then slash new and then edit an existing comment articles article ID comments and then ID so this is your comment your ID of your comment that's being done there uh, and then edit dot HTML dot ERB and then you have an article comment path which will show a comment it will patch to a comment if you're using update uh, put kind of um, mostly equivalent to patch uh, more like an an upsert rather than an insert in some cases and then uh, delete if you're going to delete your um, your comments on that article and then we still have our articles path with all its resources so you can see that it produces a nested resource if I go in and undo that so actually let me copy it so I have it available so if I went in and did this and see now these are 
shallow routes. So these, these would be top level routes without a reference to your article ID. So comments new, comments edit, uh, comments ID to show, it would be uh, without the reference to that article. And some of these could make sense to have a, a shallow route for them. So if you wanted to do kind of a combination here, and then for comments, maybe only do um, edit and update or show or something like that, um, you can do that. But we'll stick with what the Rails guide is doing here and keep it as a, a nested resource. And then I think we'll stop there. Let me make sure that I didn't break any of my tests. But we do have an error. Foreign key constraint failed. So uh, when we go to try to destroy an article there, and we're going to get to this a little bit farther down in the in the guide. I'm going to jump forward and. So um, it, it's not until section 10 of this, the, the leading associated objects, but um, because it's making our tests fail, I'm going to um, kind of jump that forward and just note that we um, in the commit message that we're um, kind of doing this early so that we our, our tests that are um, don't break for that entire time period. So we're going to go into our article resource and change that has many comments to has many comments dependent destroy. And what that's going to do is because we have a foreign key constraint in our schema here, foreign key comments articles, what that was doing and the reason why it was calling the error, causing the error, is that it was um, trying to um, delete the article, which would cause the the foreign key in that to no longer be associated with a table, uh, w w with an ID of an article that exists. So that um, causes the tests to fail. If we wanted to make it so that it didn't do that, we could have done foreign key false and then something like dependent nullify if we wanted to have uh, a little bit more independence for the comments where they could potentially exist without an ar a apparent article existing. In the case of comments, it, it always has that child parent association. So uh, making it a foreign key um, and using this dependent destroy is is the right uh, engineering decision to make here. So we'll try rerunning that test. We're back to passing. And then I'll run test all. And that's passing. So we can go now and look at our diff on the items that we have that are not net new. So we added the has many comments to articles. We went ahead a little bit and added dependent to destroy so that our tests wouldn't be failing. Uh, we went to the routes there and made comments a nested resource within articles. The schema changed as a as a virtue of us adding the new t new migration and running it. So the, uh, the the new comments table and then the new foreign key is there in addition to the items that we added there. So we'll add everything and write our commit message. 
So we've got our commit message here. We will save it. Close our saved files. Push to the remote. And then we'll continue with our comments controller and some of those actions in our next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.